a secret project, years of development, and now, a race that will change the future of transportation forever. We're about to embark on an incredible journey, following self-powered electric vehicles as they attempt the impossible. A non-stop, coast-to-coast sprint across America. Will their groundbreaking technology hold up? Or will the vast expanse of the continent prove too great a challenge? The morning of the race dawns with golden light spilling across the horizon. From the cliffs of the Pacific to the endless fields that stretch toward the east, America feels alive with anticipation. Crowds gather along the starting line near the edge of California's rugged coastline. Banners wave in the salty wind as spectators strain to catch a glimpse of the futuristic machines that will soon attempt history's most daring automotive experiment. The vehicles lined up today are unlike anything seen before on American highways. They are not simply electric. They are not hybrids. They are self-powered machines, harvesting energy directly from the environment as they move. Solar arrays glisten on streamlined rooftops. Wind capture systems resemble delicate turbines seamlessly embedded into bodywork. Kinetic energy recovery systems pulse with hidden potential. Every car is a rolling power plant, a miracle of design meant to defy the limits of range and endurance. The stakes could not be higher. If these vehicles succeed, they will shatter the last barrier holding back electric mobility. Dependency on charging stations. No more waiting at superchargers. No more anxiety about distance or infrastructure. A car that powers itself could redefine travel, commerce, and entire economies. But if they fail, doubts about the dream of perpetual motion may overshadow years of innovation. At the center of this experiment are the teams who dared to believe. One team hails from a Midwestern university, a group of scrappy engineering students who worked in garages and labs late into the night. Their car is light, minimalistic, and designed with ruthless efficiency. Every curve, every panel has been optimized for drag reduction. They believe agility and simplicity will win the day. Another team is a tech giant from Silicon Valley, unveiling a vehicle as sleek as it is secretive. Rumors swirl that it incorporates advanced wireless energy harvesting, pulling ambient power from frequencies that surround us every day. Their confidence borders on arrogance, but they know the world is watching. Then there's a consortium from Europe, invited as challengers to this American proving ground. Their car resembles a spaceship more than an automobile, with adaptive solar skin that changes its angle to capture maximum light even as it speeds forward. Finally, an independent inventor rolls up in a machine that looks unrefined but carries whispers of genius. He claims his design is based on magnetic resonance systems that recharge the car perpetually without moving parts. Some call it impossible. Others call it revolutionary. Yet here it is at the starting line. The announcer's voice booms across the coastline. Cameras zoom in. Engines do not roar, for these machines run almost silently. Instead, there is a strange, tense hush before the storm. The countdown begins. Three, two, one. They surge forward, wheels spinning against asphalt, and the coast-to-coast -coast challenge is underway. The first miles are electric with strategy. Some teams push aggressively, racing to build an early lead. Others conserve energy, knowing this race will be won not by raw speed, but by endurance and adaptability. The university team keeps steady, hugging the curves of California highways, their lightweight frame gliding like a whisper. The tech giant's car accelerates smoothly, data streams flashing across their command center as if they are conducting a live orchestra. The independent inventor lags behind, his machine wobbling slightly on sharp turns, but his eyes gleam with determination. The first landmark looms, the Mojave Desert. Here, sunlight is merciless. Solar arrays gleam fiercely, their panels drinking in the rays. For some teams, this is an advantage. For others, overheating threatens to destabilize delicate circuits. By midday, the challenges begin to mount. A sudden sandstorm sweeps across the desert highway. Visibility plummets. Sensors are blinded. Autonomous systems must adapt or fail. The European team activates their adaptive shielding, creating a temporary barrier that reduces drag and protects delicate components. The university students are forced to slow down, 
their minimalistic design offering little defense against nature's fury. The independent inventor pushes forward recklessly, his system seemingly unaffected, raising eyebrows among analysts. As night falls, the desert transforms. Temperatures plummet, and the stars stretch endlessly above. Now the question is not heat but cold. Batteries risk sluggishness and solar collection ceases. Only those with kinetic or magnetic systems can thrive in the darkness. The Silicon Valley car glides smoothly, feeding off ambient frequencies even in the absence of sunlight. The students huddle nervously in their support van, watching data streams dip and praying their efficiency algorithms hold out until dawn. The independent inventor smiles quietly, his car humming with inexplicable resilience. By the time the racers emerge into the open plains, the leaderboard has shifted. Unexpected alliances form. Some teams draft behind others, reducing drag and sharing data in whispered, coded transmissions. This is not only a test of machines, but of strategy, trust, and human ingenuity. Crossing into the Midwest, storms roll across the horizon. Rain lashes against windshields. Turbine systems now have an unexpected advantage, capturing energy from gusts of wind. The students surge forward, their lightweight frames slicing through wet roads with surprising stability. But every advantage has its shadow. Water infiltration threatens electronics. Hydroplaning is a constant danger. A crash could end years of work in seconds. Spectators along the route cheer wildly, waving flags and holding signs as the futuristic cars streak past. For many, this feels like watching history unfold, a moment that could be remembered like the Wright brothers' first flight or the moon landing. By the halfway mark, exhaustion weighs heavy on teams. Engineers and command centers stare at endless streams of telemetry, eyes bloodshot from lack of sleep. Some vehicles are performing beautifully, others are limping, but all are teaching lessons no lab could ever simulate. The Rocky Mountains loom, their peaks capped in snow. Here, the real test begins. Steep inclines demand torque. Energy recovery on descents becomes vital. The air is thin, the temperatures unpredictable. Every mile feels like war. The Silicon Valley team deploys adaptive routing, weaving their car through mountain passes with machine precision. The students, though underdogs, find a rhythm, using regenerative braking to charge their reserves on every downhill. The European team struggles with weight, their heavy adaptive panels proving costly on steep climbs. The independent inventor shocks everyone as his car powers upward seemingly without effort, whispering rumors that his design may indeed hold secrets beyond conventional science. News spreads like wildfire across media networks. Commentators speculate. Some accuse the inventor of fraud. Others declare him the true visionary of the century. By the time the racers descend into the Great Plains, the competition has become a global obsession. Millions tune in live. Children hold watch parties in classrooms. Governments issue statements of interest. What began as an experiment is now a movement. Through Kansas fields and Missouri riversides, the racers continue their relentless push eastward. Every checkpoint becomes a celebration. Farmers cheer from tractors. City dwellers gather on overpasses to wave flags. The nation feels united by this strange and beautiful spectacle. Yet behind the celebration lies tension. Several vehicles have already broken down. One suffered a catastrophic circuit failure. Another crashed during a storm. Dreams end as quickly as they begin. For those still running, the pressure intensifies. Onboard systems broadcast real-time data. Speed, efficiency, power intake, thermal stability. Every fluctuation feels like a heartbeat, every dip a threat. In New England forests, the final stretch approaches. Leaves blaze red and gold as autumn spreads across the landscape. The air is crisp, the roads winding. Crowds thicken, knowing the finish line is near. The leaders are neck and neck. The university students, underestimated from the beginning, are still in contention. The Silicon Valley juggernaut races like a predator, its data-driven strategies flawless. The independent inventor, mysterious and relentless, remains a dark horse. The final miles are a blur of speed and determination. Drivers, or rather, the algorithms guiding them, 
push the limits of what their creations can endure. Spectators roar as the cars streak toward the Atlantic coast. The finish line rises into view against the glittering ocean. A silence falls before the climax. And then, in a breathtaking surge, one car crosses first. The crowd erupts, cameras flash, and history is made. The winner is crowned not only as a champion of the race, but as a symbol of a new age in mobility. Yet the victory is not just theirs. Every team, every machine, every failure and success has contributed to a vision larger than any single racer. In post-race analysis, engineers gather to study what worked and what faltered. Solar performed brilliantly under desert skies but faltered in rain. Wind turbines gave surprising boosts during storms but proved vulnerable to damage. Magnetic and kinetic systems sparked fierce debates about feasibility and ethics. The Silicon Valley car proved consistent but raised concerns about dependency on invisible infrastructure. The student's lightweight design showcased the power of simplicity and efficiency. And the independent inventor left everyone questioning what might be possible if boldness outweighs skepticism. Beyond the checkered flag, the implications ripple outward. Automakers take note. Governments consider policy shifts. Investors flood research labs with funding. And ordinary people, watching from living rooms and roadside curbs, begin to dream of a future where cars need no charging stations, where journeys have no limits, where mobility is free from fossil fuels forever. This coast-to-coast -coast challenge was more than a race. It was a declaration, a glimpse of the world to come, a moment when machines whispered to us that the age of endless travel, powered only by ingenuity and the environment, is not fantasy but destiny. And as the ocean waves crash against the shore, the question lingers in the salty air. If this was possible, what comes next?